Hi guys, good day. This is Teacher MJ and our topic for today, it's all about the midline theorem. So without further ado, let's do this topic. Now it states on the midline theorem that the length of the mid-segment will be equal to the half of the length of the third side. Now, to further, okay, to fully understand this one, let's discuss about the midline theorem. Now, this is the triangle MGC, right? A triangle MGC. Now if we get the midpoint of line MG, Okay, this is the line MG, the midpoint of line MG. So what if they say that this is the midpoint of line MG? Okay, and the midpoint of line MG, MG and we label this one as point A. And we get the midpoint of line GC. Okay, the midpoint of line GC. What if we say this is the midpoint of line GC? We label this one as point I. And if we connect this midpoint of MG and GC, we connect this one. Okay. So we connect the midpoint of MG and GC. It states that in the theorem, in the midline theorem, that the length of the mid-segment, this one, the length of this mid-segment, will be equal to the half of the length of the third side. Okay. So therefore... Therefore, if we have a triangle, we get the midpoint of this side and this side. And we connect the midpoint. And it says that the length of this midpoint, the length of this line, okay, the length of this line will be equal to the half of the length of this third side. So therefore, once again, this line is parallel to MC. So A, okay, do not forget that AI, line AI, is parallel to line MC. And the length of this one, okay, the length of AI will be equal to one half of the length of MC. Okay, so the length of AI is equal to one half of the length of MC. So that, do not forget about that. So that's the theorem there. So if this is 10, okay, if we say AI is 10, therefore this will be 20. Why is that, sir? Because the length of MC, okay, the length of AI is one half the length of this MC. So that's according to the theorem. So one half of 20, this is 10. Okay, so let's try another example. What if we say that MC is 24? So if MC is 24, one half of 24, this will be the length of AI. So AI will be 12. So that's the thing that you need to remember there. Okay, so what if we say, sir, what if we say AI is 15? Of course, MC will be, you just multiply it by 2, okay? 15 times 2, so MC is equals to 30. So that's it. That's it for the midline theorem. So, now, for the sides, okay, for the sides, so if A is the midpoint of MG, therefore, this side, okay, this side, MA, okay, is congruent to side AG. So, MA Side MA is congruent to side AG. Okay, say, sir, why is that? You will be asking, sir, why is that? It's because, you, as I told you a while ago, that A is the midpoint of MG. It is a midpoint of side MG. So MA is congruent to side AG. So you can actually write that GA, GA, or MA, or AM. So once most of the mathematicians they arrange that into alphabetical, okay. But you can actually write that MA or AM. That's actually the same. So MA, MA is equivalent. What if we say MA is seven? So if MA is seven, therefore AG is equals to seven, and GM, the total of GM, that would be equals to fourteen. Now what if we say G GI is eight? Now if GI is eight. Therefore, IC is equals to 8 and the total GC is equivalent to 16. Alright? So, that's it. That's, that's the thing that you need to remember about the midline theorem, about the sides and this measure of the mid-segment. Alright? So, to, for, to further understand this one, let's try an example. So, sir, let's, could you give us more example? Of course. So, what if we say... Example number one, what if we say given, okay, we have given, 
AI is equivalent to 10. Uh, what is MC? Let's try basic first. What is MC? Alright, so AI is 10. So this one is 10. And you are told to find MC, of course. If this is 10, you just multiply it by 2. Because according to the statement that the length of this one is half, uh, the length of this mid segment is half the length of the third side. So if this is 10, so if this is, uh, so MC will be 20. You just multiply it by 2. Because 10 times 2, that would be 20. And the length of this mid segment, length of this, according to the statement, the length of the mid segment will be equal to the half the length of the third side. So the length of this one is half of this MC. And half of 20 is 10. You just multiply it by 2. Okay, to make it easier. Right, so if you if you if you use the formula, okay, what is MC? So once again, do not forget that the length of this one is half the length of the third side. So the length of AI, so AI, okay, the length of AI is equals to half of MC. All right, you are told to find. Uh, the length of AI. So what if we say you don't know the value of MC, you are told to find MC. So AI is 10 equals one half of MC because the length of AI is one half of MC. So to get MC, this is one half, you multiply it by 2. Multiply it by 2 so that you can cancel this one. Okay, so 2 times 10 is 20. Then cancel this one, you just come 1 times MC is MC. So that's why you get 20. But this is this is actually, it will take time for you class. Just do not use this one. Okay, it will take time. Just, you, just remember this one. If this is 10, you multiply it by 2. The answer is 20. So that's it. Now if this is 20, uh, you are told to find AI, just divide it by 2, you will get 10. Alright, let's try another example. What if we say... Alright, what if we say, um, given CG, CG is equals to 32, what is GI? GI. Alright, so CG, CG, okay, this one, CG is equals to 32. So, what is GI? You are told to find GI. So, GI, so half of 32, it should be 16. Because this is this will be 16, and this will be, if, this, if GI is 16, this will be also 16. Because if we add 16 and 16, that would be 32. So, that's it. Okay, GC is 32. So, half of 32, because this IC and GI must be equivalent in measure. Okay, so GI is equals to 16. So once again, do not forget about that one class. This is GC is 32. Half of 32, this will be 16. And this is also 16. Okay, because 16 plus 16 is 32. And according to our theorem of while ago, that this side, IC is equivalent to GI. So GI is 16. Alright, let's try another example. So what if we say given AG is equals to 7 and CI is equals to 8. Alright, so AG is 7, so this is 7. CI is 8. Okay, CI is 8 and you are told to find uh, the measure of MG. What is MG plus GC? What is MG plus GC? Okay, MG. So we need to get MG. So if AG is 7, therefore MA will be 7. Okay. AG is 7, so MA is 7 because this side and this side is equivalent. And MG, that would be 7 plus 7, this will be 14 plus if if CI, you are told to find GC. Okay, GC. Now we have CI is 8. Therefore, IG will be 8. 
So, 8 and 8, CG will be, CG will be 16. So, 16. So, six, 14 plus 16. So, MG plus GC is equivalent to 30. Alright, so, let's try last example class for the midline theorem. Let's try a uh, complicated example. We are told to find X. Alright, let's try this one. Last example to find Midline theorem. Alright, so we have given here same illustration uh, triangle MGC with point is AI. So AI, now this is the we have an example for X. AI is 3X minus 2, and MC is 9X minus 13. And you are told to find X. Okay, you are told to find X and this line MC. So first find x and we all know that this line, the measure of this line is half the mc. Okay, do not forget the measure of this ai is half the mc. So this will be uh, the measure of this will be ai. Okay. Let's try the blue one. ai is equals to one half of mc. So ai... This is AI is 3X minus 2 equals, okay, equals 1 half of MC is 9X minus 13. Okay, so the measure of AI is 1 half of 9X minus 13, 1 half of MC. Now to get rid of this 1 half, okay, so that you, you're not... To get rid of this one half, you need to multiply both sides by two. Okay, multiply both sides by two, so that we can cancel this one half. Okay, multiply both sides by two, or you can actually do this one. It depends on your class. I will give you the two solutions that you want. So you multiply both sides by two. So multiply both sides by two. So if this is one half, you multiply it by two. Multiply it by 2. Okay. Multiply it by 2. This one. Okay. Multiply it by 2. So, if you multiply it by 2, you can cancel this one. Okay. This one. So, the remaining on the right side will be 9x minus 13. Because 1 half times 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Understood? There's 1 here. 2 times 1 is 2. So, 2 divided by 2 is 1. You can cancel this 1. 1 half times 2. Cancel. So, the remaining is 1. So, that's why you multiply it by 2. And this one, this will be 6x minus 4. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So, you can do that one class to cancel this out. Or, there are some students that they will do it like this. This will be 3x minus 2 equals... So, multiply 1 times 9x minus 13. This is 9x minus 13 divided by 2. So, this one, 1 half times 9x minus 13. You can multiply this one. So, 9x minus 13 divided by 2. Next is they can cross multiply. Okay, divide. Understood, there's one here. Cross multiply. So, you will get the same answer. 2 times 3x minus 2 equals... 9x minus 13 times 1, that would be 9x minus 13. And you will get the same, this this one. You multiply this one, 2 times 3x, 6x, 2 times negative 2, negative 4, equals 9x minus 13. So you will get the same answer. So it depends on you. You can multiply it by 2 or you can do cross multiply. Next is, we need to get the value of x. Okay, so we just transpose... Okay, this one class, we don't need to transpose 9 from right to left because if we transpose 9x from right to left, it will change the sign. It becomes 6x minus 9x and your answer will be negative because 9 is greater than 6, right? So this will be negative 3x So, and that would be really confusing if our answer is negative. So the thing that we will do here is we just transpose 6x from left to right so so that we can get a positive x once again let's do not forget that x equals 3 that would be the same with 3 equals x that's actually the same x equals 3 is equals to 3 equals x 
that's the same. So it's either right, right or left, we get the value of x. Alright? So it's either right or left, we get the value of x. So, so we just transpose 6x from left to right so that we can get positive x. So this will be 9x, this is positive 6, change the, change the sign, negative 6. So negative 4, transpose 13, this is negative 13, we make it positive 13. Equals, so 9x minus 6x, this will be 3x. 13 minus 4, unlike sign, subtract and copy the sign of the larger number. So this is 9, positive 9. Divide it by 3 to get the value of x, divide it by 3. So x equals 3. So x equals 3, and you are told to find mc. So mc, okay, substitute the value of 3 from this mc. So 9x, okay, mc equals 9x minus 13. So 9 times 3 minus 13. This will be 27 minus 13. Okay, so 27 minus 13, that is 14. So mc, therefore mc is 14. Half of 14, this will be, this will be 7. Okay, this will be 7. Even if we check that one, okay, let's try to check. 3x minus 2, the value of x is 3. So 3x minus 2, 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. Alright, so that's it class. That's, that's it for the midline theorem. I hope you learned a new lesson today. So if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe. You share it to your friends and to your classmates. And you have a great day. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.